Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the plat. For Platypus is the name, and welcome to another Octopath COTC video today. I want to take a quick second to say thank you to everyone that's been watching my videos. The views have been well above the, what I expected, um, above my previous averages. So I do appreciate that. Um, and today we're going to be talking about five, it's kind of six, five beginner tips. And these are going to range in from information to advice i suppose um and there's just it's kind of like a hodgepodge of things that i was writing down as i was going and i was like all right um some things i thought were useful that everyone should know if they don't know first and this is why i say partially six because this is like a 0.5 this isn't really i don't really consider it one of it but it, it technically it's something i'm going to tell you is that your starting character is a random five star of the game right um i didn't know this when i started i just thought gildroy was who everyone started with um and I should know better because I've played gotchas in the past, but it's not. You're going to get one of the five stars. Some people get Viola. Some people get that. So if you don't like the character you started with, you could re-roll your account and re-roll and you'll get a random five star. And they are a five out of five star. So that's very important um, that we'll get to that in a second. But um, yeah, I didn't know that. I just thought that was interesting. But really, um, number one on advice, and it's something I've seen people doing when talking about the game or, you know, I've just seen people playing the game basically um they're not utilizing their back row nearly enough um like at all actually so in a second let me get into a fight but one thing that's really really worth noting about the back row obviously you're you're 100 safe back there right if a character is in the back row i have yet i'm not i shouldn't say 100 safe i have yet to see a boss or any enemy interact with your back row at all if you're in the back row for so far you've been 100 safe um but also more most importantly people i feel like people are aware that you heal hp and mp at the end of the turn um but you heal 10 percent, so it's like a scaling amount it's it's a lot and 10 percent hp is like fine sometimes you need to do that but really 10 percent sp once you start getting into these chapter three story missions and then beyond that like things are picking up in difficulty and it's not really letting go um and so fights start lasting a long time for some of these fights. So being able to switch your SP, like, um, I don't know, it's like this character has 82. Oh, well, this guy's going to die for sure. I'm not even going to be able to show you because this is too weak. But I don't know why I went and found a, found a fight. But please utilize your back row. You get 10% HP a turn and you get 10% SP a turn. Very, very important to do, especially for these longer fights. Um, this one is going to be more advice. Um, in the nameless town, this is very important, actually. So I recommend getting to the nameless town as soon as you can uh, and then unlocking the third building as quickly as you can. You need to get in order to get the third building, you need to first build. I guess I'm not counting this as the first building, so I guess it's the fourth. Technically, if you want to count hers as the first, you get her two lumber. You get this person three or four of the stones. And then you get this person six of the um, hides, but this is the one you want right here. This is the nut farm. You have to go to the exchange and get a 90 memory point book. So it shouldn't take more than a couple days. You get 20 a day from daily quests, 20 memory gems or whatever they're called. Um, I think you can get them from pulling. I might be wrong there that for some reason it's in my head that you can, but I don't feel like it. I, I feel like I may have made a mistake there, but I, I still feel like you can, um, but you can also get it by going, going to the exchange here and trading in under other. You can go here and exchange your resources, right? Your lumber stone and hide. Don't I want to get rid of it willy nilly, but you need 90 to get the nut farm manual or whatever it is. Then you get the nut farm manual and you won't be able to see it because I already did it today, but you get um, 6, 12, I think it's 18 of the tasty uh experience nuts small yeah that's this is the way this is the terminology they felt like using um these small nuts are more are bigger than the big nuts that's the way i'm gonna choose to say it let's go to a traveler um let's pick someone that's level one just to make it look even better uh sigrid if we come here to the level we can see that i have um the tasty experience nuts small so i get i've already used some of these today but I got I got um 6 12 18 um to just today and it's like every 24 hour period. So if we take a look here, this will bring me from level 1 to level 13 and the small will bring me from level 1 to level 16. So these are 
bigger than the experience nuts large and you're going to get like 18 of these every day this is huge for experience i highly recommend getting to this as soon as possible because beyond even if it doesn't help you necessarily still get a character up to the level cap um because that just takes us so much experience um it still is gonna this is gonna be perfect for either slightly pushing a character a few more levels once they get higher or more importantly when you decide you want to use a new character helping them catch up to the rest of your party and just stockpiling these um i mean even these these are like the small ones are like fine but the tasty tasty smalls are great and you get a chance to improve the farm even more to get i assume either more smalls or you get up to mediums and larges but absolutely focus on getting to the nut farm in nameless town all right and another thing this is another acceleration idea um that i i think everyone should be doing and that is to accelerate to hunts um hunts are very good they give you great resources i'm gonna do a slightly more in-depth video on hunts next um after this i don't have the daily reset you get one hunt a day and or you could spend some gems to get more um, and I just don't want to spend the gems on that. So I'm going to just wait till tomorrow and I'm going to make a video on hunts so I can show you guys what they're like. Um, but as you get them, you get really, really good rewards. You, you get lots of experience, not like insane experience, but you get good experience. I think you get like 20,000 experience, something that's like still really good. And this is the lowest level hunt. Um, you get a good amount of gold. I think I got like 30,000 gold, something like that. The numbers don't take too much weight on these numbers. I don't remember exactly, but I remember I was like, oh, that's quite a bit of gold um leaves and um you also most importantly you get every single day you get um shards are they called shards they're called um let's go to the status of our main guy here um guide stones you get guide stones for every character that takes place in the hunt so if you have a bunch of five stars you're going to be able to get their guide stones uh which is very very good because guide stones are always going to be good even if they become quote unquote useless because you've hit the level cap um that you can limit break with them you could still exchange them at the exchange for shards to then exchange for other things so it's never a bad idea but also it's going to help all your characters get to the get the level cap to go up um so yeah absolutely be doing that i recommend going to the hunts in order to get to the hunts um you have to beat the three main stories then you're going to get a little subplot that is pretty fun i enjoyed it um kind of a i thought it was not too hard of a boss fight but a lot of hp but you're gonna go to um a town and then you're gonna go to another town and you'll lock it automatically once you go past the end so after the three main stories you go to the merchant town from the first octopath um rip ripple tide and then the town after ripple tide they have you go to is where you will unlock hunts so try to get there as fast as possible and which one was that was that number four one two three all right we got a couple more here i i said there's five tips I, i'm not even counting i've just got a couple good ones here um oh and this one actually you know what this one is brought to you by kage i'm gonna link his videos down below um i subscribe to him he does mostly dragon quest tact content however he has started doing content for um octopath as well i mean it's even um kage dqt which is dragon quest tact but uh he found out on your daily kates um and i would recommend go watching his video for more uh information but basically you know every day uh even though mine was glitched for a while and it wasn't resetting it is working now um defeat crafty kates you watch an experience you get to they summon a high experience enemy for your team to kill there are a huge range of strengths for these characters there's like the level ones and then which give you like a thousand experience and then who knows how high they go i don't even know yet but i've seen kage who's not as far into the game as me fight one of these kates that gives fifty thousand experience it looks like santa claus he's got all this cool stuff on um basically what he found out is you can re-roll these um you can't do it for the treasures uh he wasn't able to get it to work but you are able to do it for the kates basically you sit here you watch the ad and then you summon the kate and you see what you get if you don't like what you get you just boom you force close out of the game and you then reopen the game and then you watch an ad again and you can basically re-roll it so you get higher quality kates i don't know if i'm gonna bother doing it for if i get decent ones but if i get really low uh kates with like bad luck i'm absolutely gonna be using this to re-roll them um 100 so 
I do recommend that check out his video for slightly more information because I haven't actually done it myself I he just found out about this today I was talking to him about it so watch him he's cool um also so two more again it's kind of it's kind of one more a little bit two more yeah yeah we'll, we'll just do one more but the another 0.5 really quick is just when you're checking out characters one thing is super important is to be checking out these passives uh, i've when i've been talking to people about skills on characters or you know about characters even because i'm going to do a follow-up video three more characters that you shouldn't overlook because that video did really well um it's got good feedback um people aren't checking the passives on their characters absolutely check the passives on characters they're very very important and there's two main things you want to check when you're checking passives because there's a lot of bad passives in every character which aren't necessarily bad but they're like elemental resistances you want to go to their very first level one thing here and check their passive this is like one of their signet there's like two signature passives from what i could tell so far um extend the duration of enfeebling effects including status ailments uh excluding status ailments inflicted by front or back row so this is pretty good because if you do something like lower attack right that'll be an enfeebling effect but it's not a status ailment so it'll if you do it for two turns it'll instead last for three turns if you lower their resistances their defense it'll last so you want to check here on level one and then you want to go up to level three and you want to check the locked one there's an unlocked one which is going to be ice by 10 percent or whatever it is but the locked one that you have to hit level it's this one's 50 i think it's normally 40 for four stars maybe it's based on your star level this will be like the second one though right raise recovery amount of absorption skills by 50 percent for self um so this means when she does her hp absorb attack she'll just heal more which i don't really think this app this is insane but whatever it's like fine but check these passives on every character you want to check these two you want to come here to the level one passive see because there's some really cool ones for you know wingate like in my first video right you go to the passive skill raise damage of front row to broken foes and then you come here to the level three skill find the locked one raise damage of self by 20 percent when exploiting enemy weaknesses so these are the very good passes you want to look for all right these are good characters um you, it's going to be because characters are way more than just their skills they're the passives can be very impactful absolutely characters are a kit um and sometimes their kit i run some characters purely for their passives and i run some characters purely for their skills and a lot of care most of the characters i'm running for some combination of the two uh all right finally and this one is important because i've seen a lot of confusion on this um star levels of characters so people I i've seen people that are like i have um let's find one that's here i have a three out of four star trish here i've pulled multiple trishes how come she's not four star um so this is the way it, it works basically it, is every character has multiple star levels you can pull them from from the gotcha if we come here and go to the guidance range besides three stars three stars are always three stars honestly i wouldn't waste your time on them unless there's some insane passive like the experience boost that you really want and you're farming specific characters to try to get them to the max level and that 10 percent's a big deal on like someone like i think it's like dotty or whatever um but you can see you could pull either a four star character or a five star character for the uh, four stars the the na the four stars and the five stars they have you can get the three star version or the four star version of these characters um and you can take a look at the percent chance right for the three star characters they're sorry the, for the four star characters you're much more likely to get their three star variant um which is understandable so if you get the three star version if you pull 10 and they're all the three star version you're still just going to have the three star version it doesn't change anything if you pull 100 no difference you have to pull the four star version of them for them to get that fourth star or so keep in mind there's two you could pull different star levels that was the first point and the second point is you can go into party you can go into let's find a character uh iris here you just go into learn skill come on video game learn skills and you go down to the locked one and this will show you the currency that you need to use to unlock this now this is pretty expensive this isn't a joke for sure right like no this stuff is uh most people probably aren't even having this stuff yet i am getting this stuff finally from doing the um the hunts but you can also get these at the exchange for a very expensive amount so it's absolutely not something you want to go willy-nilly um but two sub points on this i don't believe the star level affects stats i could be wrong on that don't like quote me on that 100 
but from what I could see, it doesn't seem like the star level affects uh, stats. It seems to affect the max level cap. And so every character, before I'm, get, I'm getting ahead of myself, let's, let's just get here and show you, right? So if you come here to the silvers, or sorry, to the bronzes, you can see you can come down here and get the seal of the huntress, seal of the flame bearer. They're 15,000, right? I've got a thousand of these. They are not easy to get. You can go to shards and as you get extra things you don't need, um, which you get these daily from just running characters and their stuff. Like you, you could toss these. I have 120 of these, right? If I wanted to do this, I can get 600. So like I might be able to liquidate and get one character from a three star to a four star. But again, I don't think it has a stats thing. This is stuff that, you know, is, this is like long-term grindy ways to get level caps. So we're not hitting level caps yet. If you're watching this and when the video came out, it's just not realistic for pretty much anybody you would have to be the biggest whale of all time to be able to manage to hit that or i've dedicated everything to one character and even then i'm not convinced but so um you can get that currency to get up to three stars to four stars but characters um have two ways to increase their level caps and they they stack so you're going to want to do them both eventually but one of them is exactly what uh what we said is we go over here and we go to learn skills if you go up to the final star level you will get 20 more levels so you'll go from 40 we can see that she's a three out of four star and my four out of four stars are 60 right well this is a, a four out of five star but if we have a noel right noel is level 60 right so she has 20 levels above iris is her level cap because she's got that star level Beyond that, you go to the limit break and you can get another 20 levels here and it gets pretty expensive. It's definitely not fast, right? But you can go up to level 60. So look, four stars can get up to level 80. Five stars can get up to level 100, meaning five stars are eventually going to be the be all end all probably overpower things most of the time because the pure stats you get from that level difference is probably big. But I guarantee like always, there's going to be some really standout four stars that are going to outperform five stars in specific fights and things like that. So uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up. This video was definitely longer than I was expecting. It might have even had been more than five points. It might have been closer to seven or eight for all I know. I don't. It doesn't matter. Point is, these were five points that I thought would help you out. Guys, if you have any questions about the game, please leave it in the comment down below. I'm sure I didn't go into everything into as much detail as I wanted. Even though this video was long, it was still supposed to be relatively streamlined so you can get through it pretty fast to learn everything you need. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for platypuses per platypus. I will catch you in the next video. Thank you. Check out Kage. Also, thank you, Veggie Messiah, for helping me come up with these videos as well. Uh, you can check out his stream. They're both going to be in the video comments description down below. See you then next time. Bye.